Hi, Sophia. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, first, before I even begin this video, I must make three very, very important disclaimers. One, do not panic. Do not panic at all while watching this video because you're going to be just fine. Number two, please watch the video to the end because I find people just watch videos and then they just watch like one or two minutes and they're already on the comment section. So please watch the video to the end, understand what's in the video and then make your own conclusions. Number three is I am not a doctor. I am not a doctor, I am just talking about my personal experience. It could be different for you, it could be different for a friend, or, for, or from what you read online, it could be different. This is my story. So this is not cast in stone, I'm just talking about what has happened to me. Also, uh, yes, I'm not a doctor, so if you have uh, more questions or things like that that you uh, that maybe I'm missing from this video, please consult your doctor, you know, your, your GP or your gynecologist or your medicine man or whoever it is that you usually consult when you get sick. Okay, a few weeks ago, I made a video about uh, me getting a pap smear at Aga Khan. It was like a live pap smear um, procedure. I will leave the link in the description if you haven't watched it. Um, it was just a regular thing that I normally do every year or every few years just to know that everything is okay with me when it comes to my vagina. And after that, I got a call and I was told that I have um, abnormal cells. So what these abnormal cells were, they call them some, they call them HSIL. Um, I didn't get all the information, but I was, told, I was told that I need to go see the doctor. Immediately, I freaked out. And that's why I was saying, you, do, you should not freak out. So for me, I was freaking out. I went online, looked for everything to do with cervical cancer. And I was just thinking, oh my God, I was going to die. Um, they said it was related to HPV. I started looking up for information for, um, for HPV. And actually, that's why I'm making this video, because I found very little to know information when it comes to HPV in general. So whether it's videos made in Kenya or videos made in um, outside of Kenya, there's just no information until I went to see my doctor. And then um, she told me, my gynecologist told me that actually HPV affects eight out of 10 women in this world. So if you're right now, if you're in a room with 10 people, only two of you don't have don't have HPV. So if you're in a matatu with 10 women, only two of you do not have it. And also, in your lifetime, you are going to get HPV. It's almost inevitable. I'm saying almost inevitable. So from the time you get sexually active to the time you're around 50 years old, you, you may have gotten HPV at some point in your life. But the good thing is, um, not not all HPV is um, is dangerous. Most sometimes we'll have most of the time you will have HPV. You won't even know that you have HPV. So, anyways, let's go down to the facts about HPV. About HPV. Fact number one about HPV is that there is no cure. There is no cure for HPV. The moment you get it, that's it. You're with it, but not for the rest of your life. That has to be the most important part that you have to remember. Not all HPV will remain with you for the rest of your life. Most of it is uh, like 16 to 18 months. And half the time, you won't even know that you have HPV because there are no signs, there are no symptoms, but that's another point. But anyways, um, there is no cure for HPV. Um, there are about a hundred different types of HPV, but only 15 of them actually cause cancer. So you really don't have to worry. That's why I was telling you, do not panic. Only 15 types cause cancer. Also, when you get a new partner, it is not required for you to disclose that you have HPV or you've had HPV um, before, because there's, there's just you know, it's not like, you know, with HIV, you have to disclose and you have to say, okay, I have HIV. But with HPV, you do not need to disclose that, if you don't want to, that is. Point number two is anyone, and I mean anyone, who is sexually active can get HPV. You are, you can get HPV, you are open to the, to the virus if you've had sex. And that doesn't matter if you've had sex with one person or you've had sex with a hundred people, you can get HPV as long as you're sexually, you have been sexually active. 
Point number two is that the HPV virus can be dormant for years, and I'm talking years, like even 10, even 15 years. It can be dormant for so many years, and then later on it gets active. So there's no sure way of saying how or when or who infected you with um, with HPV. So you could be you could have gotten HPV the moment you started being sexually active, say at 18, and only 10 years later when you're 28, you're like, oh, you have HPV, and then you're wondering, well, I. It's been years since I had a partner or I've only been having one boyfriend and then you start blaming the boyfriend but truth be told he did not chances are he did not infect you with the HPV you may be having it it was just dormant it's only now that it's active so point is there is no way of telling when or how or who gave you the HPV Point number four is HPV can be passed even when the person has no symptoms. Like I said, sometimes you can have dormant HPV in your system or sometimes you, you just don't have any physical um, symptoms that you're having HPV. Like by the time I was going for my, um, for my screening, I was fine. Like I had nothing to indicate that I have HPV until after I went for the screening. So yes, you can, pa uh, you can pass on HPV unknowingly. Next point is chances are you will contract HPV at some point in your life before you get to the age of 50. And I think I mentioned this before. Like HPV is so common that some doctors don't even check for it because this they just assume that you already have it or you've had it previously. So between from the time you start getting sexually active to the time that you're age 50, Chances are you did get H HPV at some point and it went away or you still have it and it's dormant or you currently have it and it's active but there are no signs, there are no symptoms that you actually have it in your system. Next is men are carriers of, of HPV. I <laughs> I keep almost saying HIV. Maybe that's why there's such a stigma when it comes to HPV and HIV because they're so they're so similar. But anyways, the point is men are carriers of HPV, but they rarely get affected by it. So research has been shown that uh, men could get uh, a penis cancer or anal cancer from HPV, but the chances are very, very rare as compared to cervical cancer in women who have HPV. So yes, men are carriers, but they rarely suffer from it. Next point is the type of HPV that causes warts is not the same kind of HPV that will cause that will cause cancer. So sometimes when you're having the HPV, you can have warts around the genital area or sometimes even in your mouth, but that does not mean that it's the same that having those warts mean mean that you have cancer because the same the type of HPV that causes that does not cause cancer. So that's the good news. The final point is most of the HPV that's around will go away on its own. Isn't that a relief? So the fact that you have HPV does not mean that you're going to have it for the rest of your life, especially if you have a good immune system. So unfortunately for people who have HIV, they have a very suppressed immune system. So chances of their H HPV going away are significantly lower than someone who's active and who's healthy and who has um, a good, a good um, immune system that will fight off the virus. So chances are if you're 20 or if you're 30 or 40 and you've been sexually active with different men for a long time then you probably have contracted the virus and it just went away on its own and you didn't even notice that you had it so the three main ways of getting HPV like I mentioned before are sex that's vaginal sex um, anal sex as well and also oral sex so yes I'm not saying that you should stop doing it but what I'm saying is there is a chance that you can get oral um, that you can get um, HPV through oral sex also the other way that you can get um, oral uh, the other way that you can actually get um, HPV is through kissing. So you can say, well, I'm a virgin or I always use condoms or I always do this and that. But do you kiss random men or do you kiss random women? If you do so, then sometimes the words can be inside the mouth and HPV is passed through um, fluids. So kissing that person can actually get you HPV. The types of cancer that can be caused by HPV, and again, I'm not saying that if you have HPV, you have cancer. Please don't get me wrong. I'm just saying there's, there are different types of HPV and some of them can cause cancer. So the types of cancer that are related to HPV are one, cervical cancer, there's throat cancer, there's anal cancer, there's penis cancer, there's also tongue cancer. 
So yes, everything to do with Kulamba Lolo and kissing and all that, yes, it can later on develop into cancer. So, how do you prevent yourself from um, contracting HPV? One is just do not have sex. It is that simple. That's just abstinence. No kissing, no sex. I was almost saying the F word, but no sex. Just do not, do not have sex. That's, that's the, sorry, that's the 100% surest way of not getting HPV. The second way of preventing HPV or just knowing that you have HPV is get a pap smear. For women between the ages of 21 to 65, please get a pap smear. And that does not matter if you're a virgin or not. Just get a pap smear because it usually shows, it usually shows what kind of vi if the if the HPV virus is actually present in your system. So you can say, but I'm a virgin. But yes, you're a virgin, but have you kissed a boy before? Or have you kissed a girl before? You could have gotten HPV through that. So you being a virgin does not mean that you do not need a pap smear. It's actually very, very, very important that you get a pap smear at least every three years. I go, I, um, I have my pap smear at least every two, one or two years. But now that I do have HPV of uh, the H HSIL, which is like the, uh, this, uh, the HSIL is more like the, um, the more dangerous, let me just put it in quotes, the more dangerous type of HPV. So my doctor said that because of the procedure that I just had, which is a story for another day, that I will have to get a pap smear every six months to make sure that it's, it's actually completely gone away because I'm high risk. Yes, that's the word. HSIL, it means I'm just high risk. And then LSIL is low risk. So that the low risk is the type where you get the warts and all of that. So you're low risk. You have nothing to worry about but the high risk it means it could probably possibly develop into cancer um, in a few years time so I do need to get regular checks that's every six months just to make sure that everything is under control the third surest way of preventing um, of preventing HPV is to use condoms just basic use condoms though there is a disclaimer to this condoms are not a hundred percent will not a hundred percent protect you from HPV simply because HPV can affect other areas that are not on the penis so like we already discussed it could be in the mouth there's no condoms for the mouth also as you're having sex with this person they could have what's around the penis and then you have your opening and, that, and like we said um, the HPV virus is is, um, is is transmitted through fluids. So yes, the man is wearing a condom, but then at the end of the day, he has what's around his genital area, so the fluids can get into your system. So it is a way of preventing it, but it is not 100%. So another way of preventing HPV is be in a monogamous relationship. So basically have one partner you have sex with and also let that one partner also only be having sex with you. And that's the only way that you're going to cancel out HPV. Otherwise, if you're all having sex with other people, then the chances of getting HPV, even when you're using condoms, are increased. Now, the final way that you can prevent HPV is get vaccinated. Yes, there is a vaccine that you can get to prevent HPV. The only downside to the vaccine is that it is not 100%, um, it does not prevent you 100% because like I said, there are 100 types of HPV. You're not going to get vaccinated for each and every type of HPV. But it is good to get vaccinated because then it prevents you from certain types of HPV. The best time to get uh, vaccinated is between the ages of of 11 to 12 years yes that young so if you have an 11 year old a 12 year old get them vaccinated because you should get vaccinated before you start get uh, getting sexually active and actually in developed um, countries they actually they they actually give those vaccine um, those vaccines I, I thought it was a must but then someone else said it's not a must for them to get vaccinated but it is highly recommended my gynecologist also told me that from next year the Kenyan uh, the Ministry of Health is also planning on getting vaccines for for around 15 to 16 year old, the teenagers, they'll also start getting vaccinated, which is a very, very good move. Because if this is something that can be prevented, then why are we not preventing it? Um, if you did not get vaccinated between the ages of 11 and 12, you can still get vaccinated all the way up to the age of 26. I'm not sure why 26, but um, anyone who gets vaccinated after the age of 26, it's still good, but it's not as effective as someone who got vaccinated below the age of 26. So right now, I'm going to get myself I'm going to get myself vaccinated but it the vaccine will not be as effective as someone who got vaccinated at age 11 or at age 26. So, how do you know that you have HPV? 
Unfortunately for most people, and that's also what happened to me, is that there, there are no symptoms. There's nothing, literally nothing, to show you that you have HPV. You know, with a UTI, you have like a discharge, or you have a smell, or you know, something will happen to make you know that there's something wrong. With HPV, there's literally nothing to show you, unless you have the less risky type that has warts, and that's the second way of knowing that you could be having HPV. When you're having warts around your, your genital area, then it could be HPV. I'm not saying it is HPV. Like I said, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know everything. So it is, it, it's not a must that it is HPV, but it's a good sign that you may actually have HPV. The third and unfortunate way of you knowing that you have HPV or you may have had HPV in the past is when it already develops to cancer. And that's why I was saying that um, it's, it's very important for women to get pap smears because for me, when I went for my pap smear um, a month ago, that's when they discovered that I have abnormal cells. So the fact that th those abnormal cells are caused by HPV. At this point, they're just abnormal cells. They are not cancerous. So um, currently, I um, a few weeks ago I did um, a small procedure where they cut a piece of my cervix it is currently in the lab they're still trying to figure out is it with the abnormal cell that they found are they cancerous or not and then we take it up from there but the point here is the moment you go for your pap smear and then they get your abnormal cells, do not freak out the way I did. I was such a mess. I thought um, I have cervical cancer. I thought I was going to die. I was like, oh my God, I'm so young. What's going to happen to me? But do not panic. If you go for a pap smear and then they tell you you have abnormal cells, it just means that you might have the type, the one of the 15 types of HPV. The good news is it is not cancer yet. It is not cancer. So what can they do to prevent it from developing into cancer? So the moment they find their abnormal cells, these abnormal cells take about 10 to 15 years before they actually develop into cancer. So by the time you're getting symptoms of cancer, by the time they are becoming cancerous, then it means it, it has been in your vagina or in your, in your system for about 10 to 15 years. So this is something that can actually be prevented years before because it can be detected um, years before it actually develops into cancer. So that's why when I was googling the um, symptoms for cervical cancer, I had none. I had zero. Then I'm like, well, how can I have cancer and I have zero signs of cancer, of cervical cancer? But that's because right now they're just cells. They're very small cells that take a long time to, to develop into, um, into becoming cancerous. So, my main reason for making this video is to encourage each and every one of you ladies out there to please go and get a pap smear. Unfortunately, there's no one test that will say if you have HPV or not. Like it's not like a it's not like a like a HIV kind of test or a pregnancy test where you just go and get something and it tells you whether you have it or not. It's very hard to detect it, but usually a cervical cancer screening and that's a pap smear usually helps you to know if you have it in your system. And like I said, HPV is something very 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 common 80% and I mean 80% of the female population have it so chances are as I'm speaking to you right now you could be having it another chance is that it is totally harmless you don't have to worry about it but do you really want to leave this other uh, this other percentage to chance you know because um, cervical cancer is the second highest killer of Kenyan women now this is not a worldwide figure this is a Kenyan figure after breast cancer cervical cancer it is what is killing most of our women that's the bad news the good news is it is the most preventable cancer that is there why? Because it can be detected 10 to 15 years before it actually develops into cancer. That is why it is extremely, extremely important for you ladies to go out there and get a pap smear done. The best time that you should get a pap smear is usually during the breast awareness uh, month in October. I made a video um, a few weeks ago telling you what, which places have discounts. Most places will actually have very massive discounts or some will even do it for free. I did it at, at Taga Khan and by then it was just a thousand bucks. Just a thousand shillings, go get screened, go get tested, go know uh, what, your, um, what your status is. Right now at Aga Khan, I think it's 
it should be around 3,500 because the offer ended. It should be around 3,500. But if that's like a can, then I'm assuming in public hospital, then it must definitely be cheaper than that. And if your health insurance covers it, then all the um, that's all the better for you. So please go get a pap smear done because it is the only way that you're going to prevent HPV. And let's have an open conversation when it comes to this because I feel like people uh, look at it like if i say i have hpv it means that i'm sleeping with too many men or it means that i have hiv or it means that i don't know people just have all these connotations when it comes to um diseases or things that affect our vagina or our genital area and that should not be the issue because the more we have open conversations about hpv the more we see how normal it is and the more we go seek help and the more we get pap smears and the less chances of us dying of cervical cancers 10 to 15 years from now Thank you very much for clicking in. I um, I really appreciate the new subscribers that I've gotten. Please keep um, subscribing, share this video, like, comment. Let me know if you have experienced HPV before, or if you have any questions regarding to uh, regarding to HPV. Please let um, let's discuss it in the comment section. If it's something that we cannot answer, please, like I said, go visit your doctor. They are professionals. They will advise you accordingly. Like I said, this is just my story. It does not mean that it's the same for you or for your friend or for someone that you know so um, I will see you next week I usually make videos every Sunday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Kenyan time I talk about vaginas and I talk about the grace cup and I talk about just women issues and things that have that I have experienced or my friends have experienced um, when it comes to um, just being female or and being a woman anyways I will see you next week and goodbye